<laughs> girl, I don't know how I feel about the internet. If y'all know me, then y'all not. Nah, okay, let me say this just in case your girl don't know me. So, I'm no stranger to going live and having a fab live room. And this has been a very reoccurring thing for me. Back in the day, around 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18 era, I used to be on Instagram heavy. And I used to have this show called Ballads and Booze. I want people to understand I've been this bitch, you know? And you can go on my Instagram and see this. But I've been this girl. My Instagram is T-R-A-Y-V, three I's, O-N. Nothing that I'm doing is new. I've been in the field. I've been on activism. I've been, been, been. So back in the day, like I said, I used to have this show called Ballast and Booze, and it was a live show. So I would go live, and we would have a poetry segment, and I would bring different people up, and we would kind of talk about, uh, you know, hot topics. But not hot topics in terms of drama or mess, but, you know, just psychological topics, topics that made you think about who you were as a person. And um, I would have people step up and promote their brands. So I had a girl from Africa come on my live and she promoted her clothing brand. And I felt so honored when I made that, when when that happened, because it really just, for me, it established, damn, okay, damn, bitch, you know, I'm doing something. I'm connecting some people because imagine a girl that live in Africa, girl, I think she was in Nigeria coming up on my live and I'm from Florida getting up there promoting her, uh, her brand and stuff. I just, uh felt as though girl I'm, I'm living in my purpose so this ain't like i said this ain't nothing new you know what i'm saying we we, we gets down and we gets busy in the kizzy um but there are so many aspects to the internet that really make me uncomfortable and hold on i might put this on youtube so if i do i gotta look i gotta look a little pres- i gotta look a little more presentable <laughs> no shade again so i'm no stranger to going viral uh, or or you know just having people in my room that's always been a, a big thing for me um but when i look at the state of the internet now I really just don't know. And sometimes I used to kind of wonder why certain celebrities or influencers just wouldn't take their career seriously or wouldn't, you know, push past certain limits. Because we all know a couple influencers that were really, really hot, really, really big, got to a certain point and just said, "Mm, this is fine enough. And no shade. The reason why is because the Internet is a very weird place the internet is just so weird when you start getting so much attention the internet just it it don't it don't become fun no more no shade you can get online for example nikki said when she first got out when she first got into the music industry it was fun because nobody cared about what she had going on but she said as she started to become bigger motherfuckers could see her blink wrong and it would be a, a story about her in the tabloids and honestly that's what I feel influencing gives nowadays. It used to be this fun, cute little scene where you could get up and talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about, create your content. Now, everything is about controversy. It's about mess. It's about drama. People want to hear salacious news. When he can't get up there and she's, you know, hosting classes and giving money back and paying for her stylist and doing all of those great things. Girl, nobody talking about that. That's not going into circulation. We, you know what I mean? We're not making... Stitch, stitches upon stitches upon stitches doing that it's oh yeah oh yeah she got go, this going on behind it so last night and seeing the way how even seeing how i'm up here and i'm talking about what i'm talking about and people are purposely missing my point and i could say something and there just got to be that person that wants to make a statement so they'll they'll say oh well this is actually it's just always that person that got to go contrary to everybody else i hate that i hate a motherfucker that's so smart till they become ignorant bitch it's uh it's 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 an intellect uh intellectual stupidity um and i i just don't have time for it it just makes the internet insufferable and i won't even lie it kind of you know, makes me just say, uh, because I have good intentions, right? So as I'm stepping on live and I'm coming into these platforms, I'm coming from a pure place, right? But nobody is on pure shit. Nobody is on loving each other or holding each other accountable out of love. People say, oh yeah, we want to hold celebrities accountable. No, you don't. You want to be able to get a stick and beat them with it because you feel that you have this imaginary proximity to them and that because they live on this pedestal in your mind that they're supposed to be perfect. And it's sad to me seeing so many people comfortable with projecting all of their insecurities, failures, and standards that they themselves cannot reach onto others it is not 
a, a era of holding people accountable. This is not an era of camaraderie. This is an era of judgment. I remember back in the day seeing influencers who would make mistakes and people would say, oh, we need to hold them accountable. No, you don't. You're not holding them people accountable. You're just judging them. You're, you're not even judging them. You're, be, you're berating them. You're tossing them like trash. And I wonder in this era of the Internet, where has humanity gone? Because nobody behaves like a human anymore. And this whole loving hip hop, but not even loving hip hop, this whole not loving hip hop. Now that's TV culture. That whole baddie shit got people brain dead now because they think everything is a baddie episode. Everybody think everything is a fucking edit. You know what I mean? It's not. Girl, this is the real world. This is not high school. This is not the 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 popular girls versus the non-popular girls. This is not, you know, high school crush, little itty bitty gossip, bitch. This is the real world. And it's sad, it's sickening and just outright irrehensible to see the way that people will treat each other on this here internet. I'm literally watching everybody go about saying that Fanita is allegedly on a substance. Oh, she having a manic episode. She must be doing coke. And my thing is, if the girl is really doing any of the above, you don't think that you making this tirade isn't going to negatively impact that woman's health? And my question is, how many times do we need to see it? How many times do we need to see these celebrities and these public figures go through all of the abuse that they go through and actually turn to substances and actually lose their life behind it? Because some people will say, oh, well, this doesn't mean that they're excused of being held accountable. This doesn't mean that we can't have an opinion. This doesn't mean that we can't tell them what's right, what's wrong. <laughs> Bless me. My question is, Everybody is so concerned with holding celebs and strangers accountable, but they don't do the work in real life. And that's the problem that I have. You don't hold yourself accountable. You don't set boundaries with your mother. Anytime shit get difficult for you, bitch, you go to your immediate trauma response. Fight, flight, fawn, or freeze, sweetie. You don't even have the tools. So that's what gags me. I hate the accountable kind of conversation because you got to have tools in order to do that. You get what I'm saying? This ain't no, you know, and it's sickening to me because everybody wants to talk about, ooh, support this movement. You talking about raising money to go support another group of people. Meanwhile, you're berating your own people on the Internet. A bitch is going to put a watermelon in their bio and then go talk about if they need to be in on coke. Baby, what? I don't understand. I'm confused. Bitches will go sit up here and talk about, oh, we, uh, um, we, we, we stand in solidarity with, with, D, with DV survivors. And then we'll go make fun of Megan Thee Stallion and call her Bigfoot. I can't make it up. I can't make it up. I wish I could, but I can't make it up. Because it's really, it's really just like that. I miss the days of getting online and it just being fun, you know, enjoyable. Just, you know what I mean? But it's not like that no more. And not everybody wants a moment. Everybody wants to be a troll. And honestly, I have to admit, capitalism has really changed the scheme of the internet. Because motherfuckers was getting on the online to have fun when they knew they couldn't make no money. Because it was just a fun hobby, a creative outlet of sorts. But now because people know that they can make six figures, everybody wants to have a trending video. And as a result, everybody has sold their soul so they want to try and hit the the pavement they want to try and hit the algorithm they want to be in the top percentile so that they can go and get into the creator fund and they don't care what they got to do in order to do it i'm never against free speech i'm never against opinionated bitches i might not like opinions i'm okay with that but what i don't like is that everybody has gotten into this berating culture Everybody's gotten in this culture of trying to find something negative, and that's what I don't like. There's a big difference between having an opinion. Oh, yeah, this is what I think. This is how I feel. But it seems nowadays everybody got to go out of their way to find something that they don't like about somebody. Jada Wade got up here, and she was posting her natural hair. Not everybody going on a dissertation about whether or not she's beautiful. That's the type of stuff that I'm talking about. Because, see, it's not, a, it's not just opinions. It's think pieces. It's malicious think pieces that come from the hearts of miserable people who want company in hell. 
And my question is, when did the entirety of the internet lose itself like this? Because, bitch, it used to be reduced to just, you know, shade room comments and Twitter. Now it seems like it's everywhere. Everybody is, like, on, on its way now. Everybody a negative Nancy. Everybody taking things out of proportion. Everybody trying to have a moment. Everybody trying to spin a narrative and make something out of nothing. And that's what I just don't understand. I could get a bitch saying, you know what? I don't like that. I don't see this. This I don't agree with that. Um, I, I think otherwise. But it's the narrative spinning for me, you know? And what I also don't like is when people act purposely obtuse. As if they don't understand what you're saying. I get on live and I'm sarcastically sarcastically making a joke about Section 8. And then here come Section 8 voucher holes in a fucking gaggle. In my com Well, don't be talking about... Well, ain't nothing wrong. Bitch, I ain't never said nothing wrong with no Section 8. Oh, God, can you hear me? I need some Section 8. Some hood housing, huh? A voucher, huh? Girl, play girl, bitch. I'm not shady, no bitch. No, no shade. And I think that's another thing. People do not have identities anymore, and the ones that they do possess are built upon fragility. So therefore. Any and everything can move them because if I'm a bitch that's on Section 8 and I'm enjoying my Section 8, you think a hoe gonna come up here and talk shit about me being on Section 8 and that's gonna move me and make me feel some type of way? No. And if it did, bitch, I'd be damned if I get online and I'm going in droves talking about, oh, well, ain't nothing wrong with being on Section Girl, why do you need a campaign for people to tell you that ain't nothing wrong with being on Section 8? Why do you, why would you even feel hit by that? If you on Section 8, you on se No, bitch. See, what really gagged the girls was I got up here and I said, it's a bitch on Section 8. That every time they hear a stern masculine knock on the door, they panic to go hide them clothes and hide that man. Because that man ain't supposed to be in that. See, that. <laughs> but see, now, because of the internet, everybody wants to be a Wendy Williams. And motherfuckers ain't just buying the podcast equipment, baby. It's motherfuckers that's getting on live, too. Girl, they need to start putting restrictions on these motherfucking lives. Because these motherfuckers is getting out of it. Girl, girl, it's a bitch on live. They've been on live for 24, <laughs> 24 hours, girl. Hood reporting. Girl, on live 24 hours. Hood reporting. And my thing is... Wendy says some crazy stuff. And look at what Wendy is right now. See, that's what people be gagging at. Everybody sees the glitz and the glam. They see the clout and the potential for an uprising. But they don't see what the ramifications of those actions. Wendy can't even remember certain shit, bitch. She don't even know what she did yesterday. And that's not me to make fun of her, but that's just to be accurate. It's just to spit facts. It's the, your live may contain themes not suitable for younger audiences and has been age restricted. I don't know why my live got age restricted, but... Uh, I'm going to end this live and restart. You see? Girl, no, girl. It's a bitch right now accusing somebody of a substance. I'm over here talking my shit. Now I'm getting flagged. Oh, oh, girl. It's the hypocrisy.